So let's go ahead and take a look at Smart Prep, the new feature here in uh, TFLOW 7. So I'll go ahead and uh, log in. And we'll go over here to Orders. So you notice here when you create a new order is there are additional tabs up at the top. So previously in TFLOW you'd have default properties and additional properties. And uh, what you have now is proof settings, pre-flight settings, and finishing settings. So what this means is now you can set up your job completely, get it production ready, uh, right here in the very first step. So if we go into proof settings, as you can see here, you can choose which automation script you'd like to use to build up your proof. So these are all the fields that will be put into the proof. If you choose a different script, these will all change. Uh, and again, you can see here that uh, the system will input these values automatically, but if you want to change any of these, such as, let's say, quantity, you want to override it and put in the value here, you can do that. So in this particular order, any job that goes in will put in this, this quantity value here. Or if you, again, have left it blank, it would be input automatically by the system. Same for pre flight settings. So if you'd like to you know, check the resolution and define here what that's going to be, or add bleed or crop marks uh, down here if we want to, say, add a barcode, we can do that as well. So again, all of these settings you see here are dependent on whichever profile that I choose or script that I choose here for, for the pre-flight. And then last thing here, again, we can also even define all the finishing parameters. So again, depending on which product type we choose here, we'll see all the different finishing options we can go ahead and apply here right in the TFLOW interface. So let's go ahead and leave these uh, as they are by default and uh, save this order. And go ahead and in this order here, drop in our first file. So you see here, we've uh, added the first file. It will create the job inside of the order and inherit all of those properties that we've just defined. So if you want to specify something different for a job in that order, you can do that as well. So we can click here on new job. And in the job, window here, you see we have the same options. So again, we have proof settings here. So again, we can change the value here. Uh, same here with pre-flight settings. So if I wanted to change something again, I can do that. So let's say I don't want a barcode uh, for that one. And uh, over here for finishing settings, again, I can change those parameters here. So let's say I want to go ahead and add uh, white space. And I'll go ahead and put an inch around it. And I want to add grommets, and so go ahead and put three and five. And again, we can go ahead and uh, grab our file and drop it up here, and hit create job. So this this second uh, the second job here is going to be created with different parameters than we had created our uh, additional our original job we had added to the order. So while this is finishing up, let's go ahead and check the first job, which is already done. So if we go in here, uh, we see it's waiting for approval. So it's built up uh, our proof for us, uh, as we see here. And if we go ahead and zoom in, you'll see that it's input, again, that value of 10 that I'd put in the uh, proof for quantity. Now, if I look at the uh, production file, we'll see here that we have the original banner that we dropped in. And it's added down here, some space. Let's put the barcode uh, and the job number down here at the bottom, as we had specified. Now, if I change my mind uh, regarding the finishing parameters, and it turns out that I do want to add uh, finishing to it. I can go ahead and go into product. You see here I have the finishing tab. So while I'm inside of here, I can go ahead and let's say add a mirror bleed. So I want to go ahead and put two uh, all the way around. And let's say I want to put uh, white space just at the top and bottom. Uh, just something that we can go ahead and, uh, and see here. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, hit save and apply. And you see here, this is going to update uh, this production file right here in TFLOW and get it print ready. Again, saving us a lot of time of having to do this, you know, again, downstream somewhere in the production area. So you can see here, it's done the, the bleed and added the white and so forth. So let's go ahead and close this and go back over to the other job uh, that we had input uh, before. So you see this one is on hold. And if we look at the pre-flight report, uh, you see here the image resolution is too low. So again, we had asked uh, in our main order parameters that everything in here should be 150 dpi minimum resolution. And then down here, you see it's fixed transparencies and so forth as well. So if we want to get, again, go ahead and, and uh, let it in, uh, we can do that. So we can check here production. We see here it's added the white space all the way around for us as we asked it to do. If I zoom a little bit, you'll see here it's also added in the grommets. So again, if you change your mind at any point, you can go ahead and go in here uh, into finishing, and you could uh, take those out. So if I change my mind and say, no, there are going to be no grommets, I can go ahead and save and apply. And again, that will update the uh, production file and take those, uh, those out. So again, this gives you incredible flexibility, um, getting all of your 
files production ready way upstream. So again, decreasing the possibility for user error later or having to wait uh, for someone very specialized to do this later in your workflow. So the other thing I'd like to show here in uh, version 7 is the new uh, user load widget. So here in the dashboard, uh, you'll see uh, if you go to add widget, there's another uh, new one here called user load. We'll be adding more widgets in here uh, soon as well. Let's go ahead and move this to the top and uh, let's put it right here, make it a little bit larger. So you see here the user load, what uh, allows you to do is again, it gives you all of the users that you have here in your company and uh, gives you a breakdown of how many jobs uh, each of those users is uh, assigned to. And you can click on any user uh, to get a breakdown. So if I see here, this user has 118 jobs, I can either click on the table or uh, on the user. And this will then change the graph and show me that user of the 118 jobs that they're working on, uh, what the breakdown is. So there's 50 approved, uh, you know, nine on hold, seven canceled, uh, 27 cents to production and so forth. So if I want to go back, I can go ahead and just click on all again. It takes me back over to the overview. And then again, I can go into a specific user here from the table, click on it and get that breakdown uh, once again. And again, this is just like all of the widgets, this is configurable. So in here, you can change the name of the widget. Uh, you can duplicate it, give, you know, do additional widgets with the same, uh, based on the same widget but with different configurations. You can change the user assignments, which users you want to show here. Uh, which states you want to show up, and then here also the uh, time period. So very nice tool. Uh, it's going to give you an overview of exactly your what everyone's working on, what your capacity uh, here is for each of your uh, users. So with that, uh, I think um, I hope you enjoyed the new additions to Tflow. If you have questions regarding the integration with Procero, there's a tech note on that. Uh, that will also be a a demonstration later this month. We have a webinar uh, planned for that. So you can see in action Tflow and Procero working in uh, tandem. Thank you very much and uh, hope you enjoy version 7.